Amanda Smith here with Colleen Wolf. We're both posted up, ready to go for this week on the Smith Show. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, this is awesome. I'm so glad I could do it. Thanks for having me. So on your personal website, you have this line that I'm kind of obsessed with. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> and it says that you quite literally went to college to become a boss, majoring in corporate communication. Yep. Yeah. At what point did you know or sort of decide, you know what, this is the career and the path that I want to pursue? So I really had no intention of ever doing this. Um, I was going to art school. I like sent all of my, when I applied to colleges, I sent all of my art portfolios out. And then I just randomly ended up at Drexel University in Philly. And Drexel is a like co-op program there. So you go to school for six months, you work for six months. And I didn't apply directly to the art school there. So they said, all right, just for your first year, take whatever you want and reapply. So I was like, all right, I don't know, what should I take? And they were like, just do communications, it's easy. So I was like, okay, cool. So I took communications and I liked it. And then for my first co-op, I ended up interning at a sports radio station. And I walked in and immediately was, I knew, I, like from that moment when I walked in the door, I knew that's exactly what I wanted to do. And so I completely changed course. So it went from going to school for art education to be an art teacher to, okay, cool. I, I would like to be in sports now. How do we do this? <laughs> How did you do it? How did you make that a reality? <clears throat> so I, I, when I decided it was a challenge because I didn't really grow up around sports. So I was a figure skater, but my parents, my dad doesn't really know anything about sports. And so I had to really teach myself everything from the ground up. So I decided I was just going to challenge myself and I read the sports section every day. I got like football for dummies, basketball for dummies, baseball for dummies, hockey for dummies. I read everything cover to cover and just like every minute I could, I was just trying to consume and absorb as much information as possible. And I just interned at the radio station. And then eventually they gave me a job there as an update anchor. So I had been doing double co-ops because I was working for the morning show and I would get done at like 11 o'clock in the morning and have the rest of the day. And the first year I did that, I kind of felt, felt guilty about it because I was like, all right, I'm going to go lay out by the pool, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. So I got another co-op and was working at a, for like a, a TV show that was news and politics. And I was a production assistant for them. And so I just kept working and working and for some reason, I just kept meeting people that somebody needed a job here. And so I would take a job doing whatever I could. Didn't even matter. So I was a producer. I was an update anchor, like on the, on the radio station in Philly. And then I got hired as the booking producer at Comcast Sportsnet in Philly. So I was booking all of their guests. So players, coaches, writers, whatever. And that really allowed me to meet a ton of people and network. And that sort of launched me into a good spot. So I left there and started working for a production company, like a really small production company, but they needed somebody to do Philly's pre and post game shows. They needed somebody to do the crowd reporting. And so I did that and it was really I was do I was reading message board stuff. It was like very, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it was a, a very good experience, but it was a crazy, it was a, it was a crazy situation. It was just me in a bar talking to like a bunch of drunk fans, um, <laughs> which, which was fun. So I loved doing that. And I worked there for a while. Um, and I started after that working at uh, Fox 29 in Philly. So I was working for the local news there and doing feature reporting for there in sports. I was anchoring nights and weekends and they would have me do everything. So it was an incredible learning experience. I learned how to do everything at once. And so I would go in 
I'd set my game records. I would log the games. Then I would figure out what stories I wanted to do that day, where, how I wanted to like stack the rundown and what stories I wanted to do first. I'd build it all out. I'd build my graphics. I'd cut all my video. I'd cut all my sound. I'd write everything and then like go run and do my makeup and get out there. And there was a pedal for like prompter. And so like all the stuff that I had written, I would just like, it, it was, and, and you would have to like stand on one foot in heels, <laughs> balancing, trying to like work the prompter, which was a nightmare. Sometimes it would go backwards. <laughs> it, it. <laughs> yo, it, it was crazy, but it, so it was a kind of a circuitous route to get here, but now I'm here, which is awesome. <laughs> You, know, you just talked about all the positions you had and leading up to the job that you're at now. What would you say those jobs taught you that are kind of helping you in the role you're in today? So it taught me, well, first of all, I feel like when I, when I auditioned for NFL Network and they told me all the different things that they wanted me to do, I was like, yeah, no problem. I've been doing all of that with my eyes closed for the last like three years. <laughs> And at the time when I was busting my ass doing everything in Philly, I felt I was just always so stressed because I always wanted everything to be perfect. I always wanted the show to be great, but I, at the same time, felt like I didn't have a lot of help. And looking back on that now, that was the best possible situation for me to be in because I learned how to do everything and how to do it right and how to do it fast. Like I got really, really good at putting everything together as quickly as possible and being efficient with it and knowing sort of what is doable and what isn't, which is great now because when I come in, I have a really good working relationship with everybody I work with. So everyone behind the scenes, producers, editors, directors, because I've done all of those jobs before. So I know all of the crap that they're dealing with. And I know that if I walk in, I can't just blow up a show and be like, nah, I don't want to do that five minutes before. And can I get this? And where, like, where's that video? Like, <laughs> I know that they can't just like go like that and get it. So it's really helped me in that respect. And also it just sort of helped me to take jobs, even if it wasn't what I wanted to do at the time. So to just take any job that I could possibly get in sports, knowing that it would hopefully, and it did, lead me to where I want it to be. So it was, even though a job wasn't something on air, you know, if it was producing or editing or whatever, or booking, I took it. And now it's like, when I first started at NFL Network, I was not in the role that I'm in now. And I took it. It was a digital job. It was awesome because it was at NFL Network. And I was like, yes. But I felt for a little while I got kind of pigeonholed as the digital girl. And that was kind of a tough stigma to sort of shake, even though like digital is obviously like that. That is that's where you want to be. But there's a lot of different kind of, you know, thinking there's ways of thinking at different places especially traditional television places so it was hard when I first got to NFL to kind of get to where I wanted to be and I would do whatever they wanted like they would need somebody to do something at like Rams camp that day or do something wherever and I was always like I'll do it I'll do it like let here let me do it and that really helped me kind of get to this position now. Do you feel that that is sort of the reason that you got out of sort of that digital pigeonhole that you're talking about? Yeah, I think so, because they slowly were able to kind of see that I was able to offer more uh, for them. So the role that I had before, it was very much there wasn't a lot of room to show personality or kind of show off any anything that I knew in terms of the subject because we were doing such quick hits and they just needed me to get the analyst to answer these questions and then like wrap it up and be done. And so another thing that I did that really helped was the podcasts at work that we have. There's one podcast around the NFL podcast and it's the writers from NFL.com. And I used to, and I still do, I try and go on as much as I can with them because I love them. <laughs> they were like my first friends there, but I would go on with them every week 
And that I think really helped kind of showcase myself internally because people listened and then realized that I actually knew what I was talking about and could play along with everything that's happening. So that I think really kind of helped me get, get to where I am and kind of like just shake off that like being pigeonholed because that happens a lot. I think in a lot of places you get hired to do one thing and then people just always look at you as that, which it's, it's really hard to kind of get rid of that once, once that's there. But shoot, you did it. So inspiration out here. Come did on. it. Did <laughs> it. I know. It's great. I'm, it's so crazy. I still can't believe that I'm able to do the things that they have me do. It's really, I have to pinch myself a lot. Oh my gosh. You're so cool. And I have to say, like, <laughs> when you talk about not being able to show personality, you're like really funny. So <laughs> I was going to ask you, Thank if you, you. Have, like, a background in comedy or something. I was reading your website, cracking up. <laughs> oh my god do you have I need to know because I don't even website, know y'all it says she hoards animals <laughs> I know I know so now now we just have two dogs okay. um okay. yeah but like I have a problem I want to bring home animals all the time it's like it's a it's a real issue um and also I my I don't even know what's on that website anymore I haven't looked at it in so long so oh my god I have to go back and read it um <laughs> it's funny <laughs> Yo, but when I first moved out here to LA, I took some improv classes, which was so fun. And I think, honestly, anybody that's on air or wants to be on air in any capacity at all, improv will help you so much. It kind of, it helps you get used to being uncomfortable. So you're comfortable being uncomfortable. So it puts you in situations where you're just up in front of people and you have to like think on the fly and figure stuff out and make a joke about it. And it, what, as soon as I took those classes, I felt like a completely different person. It, it really helped. I loved it. You know, what's so funny. Brooke Weisbrod from ESPN. She said that she took some improv classes too and felt the same thing. And like, now she's able to just kind of rattle things off and just feels more comfortable. Yeah, it's so true. Like I would highly recommend and it's really fun and it's funny. So you, sit, you just sit and crack up. It's great. I love it. I gotta go sign up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Ooh. Okay, I just want to play a quick little game with you. So it's a game of fun facts with Colleen Wolf. Okay. So I was going to ask you if you played any sports, but you said you did figure skating. So yeah. Into that a little bit. I started figure skating when I was like really little. I was like probably five years old when I started and I loved it immediately. I'm super competitive. So, and I have really bad eye hand coordination. So <laughs> anything that requires me like soccer, basketball, not my thing. Those were um, right. So I started figure skating and I loved it. And so I would skate before and after school. I'd get up at like four o'clock in the morning and go to the rink. And I had so much fun with it. And it's funny. I was just telling the story the other day. Um, my coaches told me that I had to take ballet classes because I was super athletic, but I didn't have any grace. <laughs> so they sent me to ballet classes so I would learn how to be graceful. And they were like, you have to start wearing dresses. Cause I would like come out and have like my tearaway pants on and <laughs> just like a tank top. Like, Let's go and like put on like DMX or something at the rink. And everybody else were just like these super cute little ballerina type figure skaters. And I was like always just, the I felt like the jock of the figure skaters <laughs> but I still have my skates and sometimes I sometimes I go out there put them on see what I still have your thing isn't hand-eye coordination mine isn't like trying to skate on ice <laughs> <laughs> okay why football I think football because I grew up in Philly and the Eagles are everything to Philadelphia. Eagles fans are so incredible. It's, it's such a fabric of, it's such a big part of the fabric of the city. And so when I started working for the sports radio station in town, like it was so Eagles crazy. And granted, I started working when the Phillies were at 
the the height of everything. My first day of work when I was booking um, at Comcast Sportsnet was the first game of the Phillies World Series. But I still wanted football. There was just something that I was just drawn to about it. I, I loved it so much. The games were so quick, so fast-paced, and there was just always – such an allure about it. I love NFL films and like watching the old sort of highlights with the music and the way that, that they sort of put everything together and dramatized it even more. So I was just like, I'm all in. This is for me. This is the sport. Last one. Have you ever been starstruck? And if so, by who? Ooh, I, I was actually a little starstruck with Al Michaels uh, when I met him at, at the Hall of Fame. Like I, there's been so many, there's been so many fun people that I've been able to interview, and I've I've gotten to meet Hall of Famers and just amazing coaches and stuff like that. But Al Michaels was somebody who I was just so pumped to meet and. I got to talk to him in the Madden Cruiser, which is like John Madden when he would go around and call the games. He was afraid to fly. So they basically pimped out this old uh, Greyhound bus and made it his like whole living studio. And we sat in there and talked and it was so awesome. And he was so great and so nice. And it's just like, there's so many days where I'm... I have to just like, I can't believe that I'm doing what I'm doing and sitting where I'm sitting and talking to the people that I'm talking to. I, when I first started, I met Dr. J who <laughs> like for the Sixers and being like in Philly, that, that was incredible. I couldn't believe that. I was super starstruck with him, but the more, the more people I interview now, like the less starstruck I get. So I don't really get it that much with players and coaches and stuff it's more people that are outside of sports and nfl like i like cameron diaz sat behind me on a flight uh, a couple weeks ago and i was like oh my god what do i do <laughs> <laughs> what did you do did you say hi no i didn't do anything okay. <laughs> <laughs> but i freaked out the whole time <laughs> Okay, we had some awesome fan questions for you. So I want to ask you as many as we can get to. Okay. Solly Lowe would like to know, Colleen, will the Browns actually be good this season? Oh, my God. I think they will. I was just at Browns training camp, and I it was just so weird to be there and to have the expectations so high for them to legit – contend in their division and for the playoffs they have so many fun pieces for baker mayfield to work with and freddie kitchens in his like first full year as the head coach with baker coming in as his first full season as the starter like that alone is going to be a major difference plus you have odell beckham with jarvis landry they were teammates at lsu they've been boys they're best friends i feel like that connection alone is going to it's just going to be, I think, a different Odell this year than we've seen before because Jarvis is, like, really the alpha. He's a, a huge personality. That's how it was when they were at LSU. So I don't think that Odell will feel kind of that pressure to be that guy. He can just, he can just be himself, which I think was sometimes a little bit of an issue with the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, and then... They just have their defense with all of the additions that they made. Olivier Vernon and Sheldon Richardson on that defensive line. That's going to make Miles Garrett even more of a beast. So I think they're going to be good this year. I'm excited. Solly, you should be excited too. Yeah. Swash Thrift would okay. like to know who has been a mentor or an influence to you? Oh, so I've always really liked – the work of I love Michelle Beadle so much I think she's so good she's so conversational I feel like every time I'm watching her it's just like that's the same person that would be at a bar just hanging out with you and talking the same way it's it's always fun and light and I think she's so good at what she does so she's been a huge influence on me just from watching her her 
and Ernie Johnson, who I think does an incredible job with all of those guys. I always think about that when I'm doing Thursday Night Football because there's so many personalities that I have to sort of, it's like herding cats a little bit. <laughs> I, I have to kind of take control of everybody. And Ernie does such a good job with all of those guys that he has on the set. So between Beatle and Ernie Johnson, I, I feel like I've taken so much from just watching them and seeing how they deal with certain situations and then kind of tailoring it for myself and being like, Oh, that's a good idea. Like maybe I can, maybe I'll try that out and see how yeah. that feels. <laughs> try it. You can work. Yeah. Make it right. Oh, exactly. Good. Exactly. So Brandon C Smith five would like to know what do you feel was your breakthrough moment in the industry or do you strive for more? Oh God, breakthrough, breakthrough moment. I don't know. Um, I get when they gave me the Thursday night football job, that was a huge thing for me. I couldn't believe that they were asking me to do it. And I was so excited because I usually work in a studio. I don't get a chance a lot to be out on the road, be out on remotes. And I love a live atmosphere like that. It's so easy to kind of feed off of the energy that games have and having fans everywhere. So that, when I first started doing that, that's when I realized that it was, it was different. Things were, things felt a little different for me and in a good way. It was just super exciting to be on the road doing these games and on such a huge platform. And that to me was just incredible. It was really it's a really cool moment for me last year to kind of take that all in. Um, but of course I strive for more. I don't know what more is, but I definitely want it, whatever it is. Like, <laughs> I feel like I caught this wave and I've just sort of been riding the wave to see where it goes and I'm still on it. And I know that I won't be on it forever, but I'm really into the whole ride that I have right now. And so I'm just kind of seeing where it goes from here. When you were working, you're doing your thing. Do they just come to you and say, hey, we want to put you on Thursday Night Football. What do you think about it? Yeah, exactly. And they were like, you know, I wasn't sure if you would want to because it's a lot of travel and you're already traveling a lot because I live in L.A., but I do my weekend show in New Jersey. So I fly back and forth every week. And I had already been doing that for a year. And so when they asked me if I wanted to travel more and if it would be too much, I was like, what? Like, absolutely not. 100%. I am so in. Let's do it. Let's go. I will fly however many nights a week you want me to fly. Let's go. And I don't even really mind flying. So as long as I'm not like stuck in airports all the time with bad connections and stuff, then it's no big deal. And things like Cameron Diaz sitting behind you happen. Exactly. And I get to keep all the miles so I can go on like a bomb <laughs> vacation during the off season. I mean, it's a win-win scenario. Them perks. Uh-huh. <laughs> Last question. Okay. It's Tim Rushi, and he says, what advice would you give to someone who one day would love to be where you are? I would say internships are super important. So get as many as you can. And if they're unpaid, they're unpaid, which most of them are. You just deal with it and suck it up. Um, don't do it for the fame or the money because usually that you, you don't get either of those things. So do it because you love sports and you love the game and you love writing or you love being on camera or you love any, like do it because you love it and not because it's going to lead to anything else. Um, and you're just going to have to work hard. I, I do a lot of my shows on like three hours of sleep sometimes, um, because the turnaround and the travel and I, I like to write everything. I like to kind of, I just over prepare because I want to be relaxed when the show starts. I don't want to be thinking about anything or, kind of like fumbling for names or, or stats or anything like that. I, I do all of my work ahead of time. So then as soon as the show starts, I'm like, let's roll. Let's just have a conversation. Let's just chill. This is because I want to be able to listen to everybody that's on the set with me. And it's really hard to 
listen to everyone that's on the set, listen to the producers in your ear, and then also be thinking about what you're going to say next. Like, I don't ever want to be sitting there thinking about what I'm going to say. I want to hear what everybody else has to say, and then I can react to it, and then I can poke at people for their answers, and then I can just, like, take the ball and move on. And I think that that sort of preparation that you're talking about goes hand in hand with what you were saying about being conversational and feeling comfortable and just, Mm -hmm. oh, is that how she would be if we were to go hang out? Like, yeah, probably. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's so important. I prepare for everything, no matter how, like, no matter what it is, I prepare the same for Thursday night football as I would for a podcast, as I would for a radio interview. Like it's, all the same to me. I want to make sure that I have all of like the information in my head so then I'm I can just recall it and it's no big deal. This has been so much fun. You yeah. So cool. And <laughs> I also like to just try to purchase all the animals that I can. Yes. But I hold myself back. So if you ever need like a buddy to go out and get some cats and dogs with you, hit me up. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go rescue more animals together. My husband will be thrilled. I'm so happy that I can participate. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, thank you so much for, for making time for me today. I really appreciate it. It's been so fun to get to know you a little bit. Yes. Thank you again for having me, Amanda. All right, guys. For Colleen Wolf, I'm Amanda Smith. We'll see you next time.